So you may have clicked on this link with the same question that most people had, and that is, who is this guy? And why am I paying tribute to him? Because you, you probably don't know him. Well, he, he's, he, he was a celebrity. He was a minor celebrity. He wasn't super huge, uh, but he was somebody that I really respected and am going to miss uh, since he passed away. But you, you could be asking the question, okay, so he's a celebrity that died. Well, Hatati, how come you didn't pay tribute to Betty White or, or Bob Saget when they passed away? And it's simple because you're asking that question. You know who Betty White is. You know who Bob Saget is. And they got thousands upon thousands of tributes from people all across the world. Leo Fong, the gentleman that is that this video is about, He's not gonna get a ton of tributes from different people, but there's a handful of people, a group of, of, of a cult following that will uh, pay tribute to him, and I'm one of those people, and I wanted, I wanted to show my respects for this guy. Uh, you probably see the, the title of this video, it says R.I.P. Low Blow. Uh, the reason why is because uh, he, his most famous film that he was in uh, was an action film called Low Blow. And uh, we'll get more into that here in a little bit, but th there's a reason why people refer to him by the name of that movie. Uh, but anyway, Leo Fong, uh, in my opinion, is a legend. He's a martial arts legend. He was friends with Bruce Lee. He went up and down the circuit of martial arts. He was a big champion and all of that. Uh, the dude was relentless. I mean, he's, he's one of those guys that just would just beat the crap out of you before you even knew what would happen. Uh, but much like Bruce Lee, uh, the, the general public didn't really know who he was until he started making movies in the 70s and 80s. The big difference between Leo Fong and Bruce Lee is that Leo Fong's movies were nowhere near as popular as Bruce Lee's films. Bruce Lee was, was world renowned for the shows and movies that he was in. Leo Fong, not so much. He was, he did a, a, a much more B-movie quality, lo, more low-budget films. And they were films that a lot of the time would just be forgotten after he put them out. Uh, but that was a different era. Fast forward to now, and people like me who are obsessed with B-movies not only know him but love him because of his quality of film. <laughs> Throw him off the fucking building! Oh! 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 He shot his yes! foot off! He shot his foot off! <laughs> we just know what his, how he operates, the things he does, and how he makes a film come alive with his special brand of martial arts. And it's funny because he didn't really start doing movies too much until he was a lot older, like in his late 50s, early 60s, and this was in the 80s. It just, it's kind of what it felt like, an old man beating up young people. But you know what, for him it worked. And so that's why he did the movies that he did. And I'm a huge fan of his films. As a matter of fact, I, I have four of his films right here. Uh, this one called Kill Point. He did this film with the great uh, Cameron Mitchell, uh, if you've ever heard of him. We are closed, the fucking doors! Uh, he did this movie. This movie is the sequel to uh, low blow. It's called Blood Street, and then of course, low blow. I have low blow on DVD. The funny thing is, is that I have I have four movies from Leo Fong. Uh, two of them were not official releases. These were VHS transfers that somebody put onto a DVD and sold them on eBay. But hell, I got them. I didn't care. I wanted the damn things. But, th but these two were official releases, and of course this is Low Blow. And the final film is actually a movie that we did on the Smokin' Hot Toddcast Live a couple of years ago, and we did an episode of Get Real on it. Uh, it is Challenge of the Five Gauntlets, in which he starred with uh, another uh, awesome B-movie legend, Lynn Kabazinski, who's, who's also in martial arts, and, and that's how they got hooked up. They, they became really good friends uh, by doing you know these types of projects. And, and they actually did one more movie together before uh, Leo Fong passed away. Way, and uh, I hope to get that soon. But anyway, this is a this is a great film. I really love this film, and I, all of his films, all those movies that I have, um, are I have them because I love what they are. Uh, I, like most people, found out about Leo Fong through Red Letter Media and their show Best of the Worst. And I came across the episodes where they talked about Low Blow and Blood Street and Kill Point and other movies as well. And I just fell in love with the guy. I mean, the guy was incredible. His movies made me laugh. 
but they were also extremely entertaining. They always either tied or won on Best of the Worst, and there's a reason for that, because his movies were just that much fun. And he really is a really entertaining actor. He's not a good actor by any stretch of the imagination. He was not a good actor, but he could kick some ass. And uh, he was just fun to watch on the screen. And, and his antics in movies were always really fun. Just, just the way he moved, the way he did things. It was, also, it was always very, very entertaining. Um, on Friday, February 18th, 2022, we lost Leo Fong at the age of 93. Uh, a life well spent, though. I mean, he was, he was an amazing, like I said, amazing martial arts expert and very entertaining in the B-movie world. And, uh, and Lynn Kabazinski did a great tribute to him. And uh, Gerald Akamira, who was in a lot of B-movies in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and also in some in some high-profile movies like Big Trouble in Little China, things like that. Uh, he paid tribute to him as well. And so it's, it's people like that that are really going to remember and miss Leo Fong. And uh, I, I like to think of myself as being a part, a very microscopic, minuscule part of that world. But I, I do love B-movies, obviously, as if you've seen from past episodes of Get Real and the Smoking Hot Toddcast Live, and, and I love Leo Fong, and I'm so sad that he passed away. Uh, I think he, like I said, he was a legend. You may not, you may still not know him, you may still not care, but I just wanted to say this, and I just wanted to get it out there, how much I love Leo Fong, and I hope he's kicking ass in heaven. That's probably not a thing since it's heaven, you know, there's a lot of nice people up there, but it's, it's the best sentiment I can give Leo Fong. Uh, but I love him to death, and I will miss him. And we'll, we'll wrap this up with a little highlight of some of Leo Fong's best moments from his movies. Here's your money. Hey, forget the sandwich. 